Yes! yes! <laughs> On the 4th of July 1990, England faced an old enemy. In the World Cup, the most important soccer tournament in the world. They got to the semi-finals and they played Germany and they lost. They lost on penalties, which means it was a draw by the end of normal time and it was a draw by the end of extra time. It was an incredibly long game and a tense game watched by millions of people in England. So by the end, they were all busting for a pee. They all went to the toilet at the same time and they all flushed the toilet at the same time. Imagine millions of valves in millions of cisterns all opening at the same time. And the water company struggled to maintain good pressure. In an attempt to keep the pressure up, they put a huge demand on the national grid. In fact, it was the largest spike in demand that the national grid has ever seen. An extra demand of 2,800 megawatts, or in Back to the Future units, that's 2.80 gigawatts. It's a phenomenon called TV pickup because it happens when loads of people do the same thing at the same time and then stop doing that thing and do something else on the toilet. But here's the thing, when there's a spike in demand, it can affect the quality of the service. So, okay, two things about mains electricity, the voltage, which in the UK is either 240 or 230, depending on who you ask. Nominally, it's 240, but the declared voltage is 230. Anyway, um, the, then there's the frequency, which is 50 hertz. So it's AC, alternating current, it's alternating 50 times per second. In the US, it's 60, here it's 50. And if either of those numbers change too much, the voltage or the frequency, it can damage equipment, like the things that you plug into the mains, they're expecting 240 volts. They're expecting 50 hertz, and if they don't get that, it can, it, it can damage them. So the national grid are obsessed with TV schedules. There's a whole department that are just there to know what's on TV and when. Nigel Williams of the national grid once said that the TV pickup of deal or no deal was gobsmackingly high. How sad is that? The national grid are in constant contact with the TV stations, so BBC, ITV, Channel 4, um, and so they know when the TV shows are going to end, when the advert breaks are going to come on, and so they can plan to bring power generation online to cope with the demand. They even know about like uh, unusual plot lines in soap operas. So, you know, if Dirty Den's coming back to the square, or I don't know, something like that. If they know a lot of people are going to watch a soap opera, then they'll have extra demand for, for when that soap opera finishes. But what's really difficult is live events that are unpredictable, like sporting events, for example. So the national grid can't know in advance when there's gonna be a stoppage in play and people are gonna to run to the toilet. Um, like certain things are predictable, like uh, one half of a game is 45 minutes long, except even that, isn't because there's injury time. In fact, the most recent England game, England versus Colombia is a great example of that because, uh, okay, so there were five minutes of injury time added on to the end. And uh, so as the national grid, you might think, well, that's great. They just, you know, push it back by five minutes. Except that during that five minutes of injury time, there was more injury time. So it went beyond that. Um, but anyway, you know, if there's a goal, then people might go to the toilet. If there's a substitution, people might go to the toilet. Um, if there's an injury, all those sorts of things. And, and they're all unpredictable. So my thinking was, maybe I can detect goals or just stoppages of any kind in the World Cup by measuring the change in frequency in the mains electricity. So I poked my multimeter into the mains and I set the camera recording uh, and, I, and I got this, this is a great uh, multimeter. It connects my Bluetooth to my phone and then I can then log the, uh, the data and then, and then put it on a graph. So here's what I got. Here's the first half, here's the second half. Uh, first half of extra time, second half of extra time, then penalties. And here are the two goals. So is there anything we can glean from this information? Well, look, any analysis we do is necessarily post hoc, like I'm looking for patterns here, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a hypothesis. But it's interesting, you know, you get this uh, sudden dip just as the game starts, I guess people are running from the toilet to, to catch the game. Um, you get a dip a little bit after 
the end of the first half. You get these little dips on both of the goals. Interestingly, there's no big dip after the whole game was finished, after, uh, after we won on penalties. Yeah, so maybe there's a pattern there, but look, I don't think you could look at this and say, I can detect goals. Like if you, if you weren't watching the game and you were just looking at this, I don't think you'd probably get some false positives. Like you go, oh, I bet there's a goal there. Of course there isn't. Like that dip seems to correspond to nothing at all in the game that, that I can see. So yeah, in a lot of ways, this post hoc analysis is bad. Like in science, you're not supposed to do that. Um, though, well, in some ways you are like, you, you can't go searching for a hypothesis in, in data. You're supposed to come up with a hypothesis in advance and then look at the data just to test that hypothesis. Because, uh, you know, if, if you go looking for a hypothesis, then you're, you're bound to find one eventually. But what you can do is, you know, this is the first stage. So I'm going to look at this data to develop a hypothesis and then I take this hypothesis uh, and test it against new data. So I'll do this again for the uh, the next England game, which is uh, Saturday 7th. So you might be watching this video after that. Um, but anyway, that's the plan. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And obviously, as the games get more and more important, more and more people will watch them. So hopefully we'll see more and more of an effect. Some interesting things I learned about TV pickup. It's not as bad as it used to be because we, because of on-demand services like Netflix. People just watch things when they want to. BBC iPlayer, things like that. People don't watch things at the specific time that they're aired on national TV. Um, the way the national grid copes with spikes in energy is really interesting. Uh, one thing they've got is these rapid response uh, power stations. They're uh, hydro, pumped hydro is the name uh, of, of these. So you've got basically two reservoirs, one up here, one down here. And uh, when electricity is cheap at night, you use the electricity to pump water up to the top reservoir. And then when there's a spike in demand, you open a valve, uh, the water pours through, turns the turbine, and, uh, and you get uh, electricity when you need it. And uh, the, the fastest one in the UK can come online in 16 seconds. Absolutely amazing. Um, some other like crazy ways to 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 keep the the power steady they've got an agreement with uh big companies that own tower blocks uh, and they say look if we need to we're just going to shut off your air conditioning for a bit like you know worst case scenario um if there's a real problem we'll pay you to shut off your air conditioning and uh for like an hour or something so you've got all these people in these tower blocks going Neck. It's really hot, but it's actually to to save people's gadgets and and, uh, and equipment. What else? Uh, I learned that there was no obvious degradation in uh, mains electricity during the royal wedding of uh, of Harry and Meghan. Uh, though, well, possibly one finding was that uh, people aren't that keen on hymns, or at least if people need the toilet, they go during the hymns. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing about TV pickup. It's not the voltage that's the problem, it's the frequency. Voltage is easy to maintain, easy, I'm probably oversimplifying a little bit, but, but anyway, in, in principle, it's easy to maintain because of the way the national grid is designed. Um, it's, the, it's the frequency that's hard to maintain. A, a good analogy for that is riding a bicycle. So uh, imagine you're pressing down on the pedals of your bike with a fixed force, uh, that's your voltage. That's actually quite a good analogy because voltage is essentially a measure of how hard are you pushing the electrons through the wire, except there's a minus sign involved because of history. But anyway, uh, the frequency is like how many times are you turning the pedals per second? Um, so you've got this, you've decided to fix the force. So that's like a fixed voltage that you're pressing down the pedals. Um, and the frequency might change if there's an increase in demand. So for example, if there's an inclined plane, so the, the bike is now going uphill, you're having to do more work. If you keep the force the same, if you keep the voltage the same, then your pedaling is gonna slow down, the frequency is gonna slow down. And it's the same thing with the national grid. In fact, it is the, the, the thing that's turning in the national grid, the, the dynamo essentially, which is powered by coal or, you know, um, radioactive decay or whatever it is, there's always going to be a thing spinning somewhere and the spinning of that thing slows down.
This video was made possible by brilliant.org. If you don't know what that is yet, it's a website full of really fun puzzles and problems that help you to think like a scientist. They've got this amazing approach to learning and it really shines through in the content of the website. Just look at these eight principles that they've put together. I really like number two. It says, science learning should cultivate curiosity. Questions that cultivate natural curiosity are better than the threat of a test. Yes, I really agree with that. And you can see this principle at play in the website. Like the puzzles and problems really draw you in. You're like, ah, what is going on with this one? And you start finding yourself thinking, oh, what, what's coming up next? You know, what's, what's the next one gonna be? It's really good. Check it out today, link in the description. And as an extra bonus, the first 76 people to use that link will get 20% off annual premium membership should they choose to upgrade. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.